chapter 13, the absurdity of an electromagnetic gravity and incompatibility of this with the law of universal gravitation. The equalities which express the simultaneity of three electrical components facing their respective magnetic fields and referring to a three-dimensional continuum with uniform movement give zero and produce, of course, a static field without no acceleration, that is, no gravity. There is no equivalent static contraction field, in this case equivalent to a field of regular motion. The variation of the vector factor C is so indispensable for electromagnetic gravitation. It is that a similar field is a function of the same dynamic form of regular movement that produces it and implies at most the negation of all force because it only expresses a regular movement of inertia. The non-variation of the vector C is therefore imposed. The electric field and the magnetic field content in the same density of space would not be interchangeable and the static content between the two would not be interchangeable without any gravity. It seems that Einstein's latest conception is absurd. This is a symmetrically spherical field in the outer space of a sphere of fixed mass charged with electricity. But with, but with accelerated movements, the equalities give within the electromagnetic concept a centrifugal resultant for the electrical components and a centripetal resultant for the magnetic components. In this case, the accumulated inertia of the magnetic field would be superior than that of the electric field, and the excess of the first over the second, when there was no other criticism, would determine in addition to the energy current a static impulse equal to gap equal to gravity. The thing is that in this case the electrical movements would be slower than the magnetic ones. This means within Einsteinianism the causal principle of the variation of time and implies the presence of two constants and equal forms, two constant and equal forms that are applied respectively to the electric field and the magnetic field but the gravitational reality of the electromagnetic theory is, as we will demonstrate later, an absurdity. However, I've already I already understand that in my theory of covariant three-dimensional fields, gravitational and electrical phenomena are identical. On the other hand, as the dynamic behavior of these two forces, assumed by me for greater convenience since they are not essential for the energetic case that concerns us is very unique from the point of view of the inertia that they produce. Two sensitive points M and M sufficiently distant within the electromagnetic fields do not express two zones separate by isolate space by absolute spaces empty of all substance but rather two electrical mass and the magnetic one which move in the same direction and the opposite direction through that complex medium, the electromagnetic field, already formed by a past cons consummation that surpasses every idea as the identical moment of that form, which has no graphic expression, but rather its entire seat of truth in an accommodative consciousness. These two masses, which are sufficiently far apart, as we have said, when moving reciprocally sink into each other through the medium that initially separates them and just as if they were a ubiquitous medium that has the capacity electrical and magnetic so that those m subscript e and m subscript m can carry out all their dynamics as a work by which they change state continuously at the same time that they are compensated by a vector change here then is the singular case of inertia. The movement m times v of the magnetic mass is equal to that of the electric mass m times v because in truth the conservation of energy 
is explained by relativistic consciousness. But according to this dualistic theory that imposes by necessity that absurdity of the ubiquity of the, uni of the medium, the initial velocity v from the point on is greater than v, that is, v is greater than v comma. In the second instance, v decreases as v comma increases. Let these increments be d and d comma. Then in the second unit of time, we will have this relationship for the inertial speeds. At the last moment in the electromagnetic moment par excellence, there will be an, iniqui an inequality for the following forms. There will be, it is clear, in both members of this relation, as many terms or addends or addends as are necessary for both increments d and d to become equal. This is a necessity for dualistic theory since those the increments change with place. This is how at the electromagnetic moment d equals d, comma. That's to say the two incremental vectors d and d comma correspond to the same point in the field. From here it is deduced that the excess of magnetic inertia with respect to electrical inertia gives this gives us the static acceleration of the moment in which d equals d comma this additionally determines a static impulse current in the effect of a real current of energy it's that the physicist whose is that the physicist most eminent of this moment of science seemingly accept the magnetic current as the reality of something that comes out of nothing with the precious virtue of not being that of not being what it was in order to be that again and so on and so on ad infinitum however if one thinks with true logic with the universal reason of the great processes of electromagnetic theory this whole train of things has to be rejected as absurd. In the two masses referred to, the magnetic one for example, m subscript lowercase m, and the electric one, m subscript e, we do not have two simple entities. On the contrary, they mean two very complex structures. The magnetic mass does not exist by itself, but as an energy space limited to an electric field and this clearly as an electric center inscribed in that magnetic space. It basically means that the electricity alone and isolated magnets are negative ideas within the space within the same elect within the same electromagnetic theory. In this virtue, Maxwell's differential equa equations within such a sensible order do not express anything. Because if we, as we've just seen, in no area of the field is there a place, strictly speaking, electrical, much less a magnetic extension separated from all electricity. That is, it cannot be had at any real time. Because in the end, every magnetic field within the continuum that concerns us is an inseparable function of some electric mass in motion. The crashing of D, E, would therefore be inevitable. The two equations, however, have some reality within the same dualistic theory of electromagnetic fields. They, when combined according to the abstract needs of space, can represent a differential zone as the only possible ideologically continuous extension but in an order as advanced as you want. To obtain it in the idea of the last electronic element as the ideal term of the heterogeneous at the limit of the homogeneous. That is to say, there in that differential expression of the highest order is the mathematical equation of the last limit as the electromagnetic ashlar of the field. Every field is then logically, it follows, an integration ad infinitum marvelously, marvelously contained within that precious ideology. However, this very minuscule expression within the infinitely small 
is a vice infinitesimal in the measure and form of a static center whose medium or central mass is a content of the highest order within the narrow field of an electro of an electronic derivative that's to say that being d of course the excess of a over the radial limit of de divided by cdt and a as is known the electronic term taking into account that the magnetic field of the corresponding electrical mass of the same nature and polar intensity of the infinite of the infinity of its con congeners 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 formed by the elemental infinity contained in de divided by cdt is conceivable then by the immediate and necessary repulsion of the elements through their respective fields. Our most eminent expression is valid because, in truth, Maxwell's differential equations already brought to this highest order the homogeneous limit of the heterogeneity. This, do, this does not imply laws that it links magnitudes of physical space, of physical states, corresponding to two infinitely close pastures of the space-time, but rather the supreme act by which electricity is balanced in its own magnetism so that it does not have to crash, does not have a crash of the highest order, or what is the same, a centrifugal zone, the field of the highest order, perfectly balanced in the midst of infinity. This repulsion of the highest order elements began in a dynamic moment that has no date within the great macrocosm. The permanence of the field is only explained because that simultaneous, simultaneous work, the one corresponding to the centrifugal action and the centripetal reaction of the same, is, it cannot but be, a work equivalent to the electrical movement capable of said magnetism, that is, the magnetic fields of the nth degree are conserved by a compression of them through the, through the great macrocosm. Here is how, in the midst of the greatest static, the reality of an electromagnetic field within its only possible dm square only produces an invariable field or without any gravity that specifies it as a dynamic space to the extent of that static acceleration that expresses it symmetrically by means of impulse currents. A field according to Einstein's latest theory, symmetrically spherical in the external space of a sphere of fixed mass charged with electricity, solves the problem of gravitation. From this it follows, we understand that Einstein resolves universal gravitation by some analogy with electrical behavior, but remembering, in accordance with our thesis, that the movement of every sensible charge of electricity produces that crash limited by elemental infinity of the nth order, of the nth order. In the measure of an infinite plane extended within absolute space as an unlimited field of statically balanced forces, it is concluded that, within a similar continuum, no gravitational force is possible, because that implies, and it is well accepted, that the porosity of said unlimited field has faded to some degree greater than the highest order, a fixed medium within which all three-dimensional change is incompatible with the absoluteness of its fixity. It follows from all this that rest in any sensible charge of electricity within the dualistic concept of the theory of course is conserved because that mechanical state of energy or electrical mass, the state of rest, does not engender any magnetism in the, in the space. But if the wise persist on this being the case, the phenomenon is bound to occur in the static measurement of fields without acceleration. See, for greater intelligence of what has just been expressed, our fields, they determine the only reason for electromagnetic static as measured by a fixed charge of electricity. 
it is that any intracosmic acceleration within the great electromagnetic process only leads to the fading of electricity in that field of forces already repeated many times in this disclosure, in this discourse. Then a charge of electricity is then a charge of electricity in the fixed mass of Earth, abstraction made of its small insensible relativistic changes, if it is to be conserved statically, it can only be done to the extent of our elemental field of forces. In that case, no earthly gravity occurs. However, if it is accepted that the movement accelerating on its orbit or the planet in question is sufficient to engender some magnetic field corresponding to said charge, as we have already demonstrated, it would all vanish in the same measure and form as those fields marked by the electromagnetic limit, marked in the best sufficiency by that derived from the highest order. From rotational motion, perfectly regular motion, we have nothing to say, since this leads immediately to that coordinate system, see the first part of this work, which made us understand the idea of a static field without any gravity, ipso facto, by the fact itself, the concept of those positive charges and those other electronic charges separated by space to the extent of that Einstein graph that circulates through the world is rejected. Electricity is, therefore, incompatible with the vital phenomena of the universe, and the dualist theory, electromagnetic, is insufficient to express electrical energy, because in the end, electronic mass in motion is contrary to what experience indicates. The experience would fade at the limit of our force fields. It is that space, not that of Einstein's, and the energy are two geometric circumstances of the same whole as measured by the cosmic difference between two different times.